What is going on, everyone? My name's Boyd, and we are looking at this beautiful, beautiful creation. The daughter of the earth god Geb, and the sky goddess Nut. Geb and Nut. Geb Nut. Isis became the mother goddess of Egypt. Yes, the goddess Isis. This is what we're going into today. We're going to be checking this uh, deep dive of Isis out. Hopefully, you guys enjoy these because the first one did all right with Zeus. We're going to keep going, see what we can do. Uh, before we jump into any of the kind of strategies or any of the kind of uh, problems that you're going to find with Isis, we'll just go over some of the more uh, basics of Isis, the god paths, what you can build with Egyptian, all the good stuff. Isis starts off with possibly one of the uh, stronger of the economic god powers in age mythology, giving you the 80% bonus gather great with, with prosperity. It only lasts for 50 seconds, but 80% is a bigger bonus than like having quarry times two, right? If you have quarry times two, I think prosperity still gathers faster. So this, this, uh, this god power is definitely better used Later in the game, when you have more villages, more upgrades, if you've got Shaft Mine plus Quarry, if we check out the actual, sorry, Shaft Mine plus Prosperity, you're looking at 133% increase from your base gather rate uh, versus with Pickaxe is only 110%. So it's a huge difference between Pickaxe and Shaft Mine. Quarry is also a big boost. So if you want to rush Quarry into, into Prosperity, it's probably a little bit too expensive to actually make that a part of your strategy, but it's still pretty good. Um, and yeah, so it's definitely worth it. So if you have no upgrades, you're looking at 75%. So definitely worth it to have pickaxe at the very least so that's a huge difference between no upgrades and pickaxe and then it's another big difference between pickaxe and shaft mine so definitely want to pick that one up moving onwards we have this upgrade here flood of the nile this is 45 free food a minute and it's been worked out from what i'm aware as one villager gathering um one villager gathering hunt without any upgrades so you're looking at something like i think it's if you just go 0. 0.75 times 60 is it's it is exactly one villager uh extra so it's you're looking at 135 gold five favor for this technology so obviously an extra villager is an extra villager, but it's very expensive. You're, you're paying you're paying nearly three villagers worth for, for this one villager. And it will pay itself off in three minutes or four minutes or so, given the favor cost as well. Uh, but it's definitely not as good as people think in terms of rushing this. I've seen certain strategies that revolve around getting this super early. It's just... It's just not that valuable. It's much better to get the town center out much quicker if you get it up a town center up 15 seconds earlier uh, versus getting flood of the Nile. It's probably better to get the town center out. Uh, so that's that's where we're going with that. Then we're going to move over into these two gods. Uh, both of these gods are worth picking. You actually find that every single one of the minor gods for Isis has its use. This is one of the very few... Uh, major gods who has a god path that works uh, no matter which way you want to go through it so long as you have that certain strategy. So Anubis, uh, Anubis is going to give you some decent upgrades. If we take a look at Serpent Spear, this upgrade is incredibly expensive for what it gives you. It's an extra 10% damage on your Spearman. So this, this here uh, is about half the cost. If you add on the 10 favor, it's about exactly the same cost as getting copper weapons. So it's it's super it's super not worth it to get this one straight away. This is one of those technologies you're going to kind of wait until you have full iron before you want to grab it. There are some strategies where maybe if, if you're in a certain situation, you might want to get like copper weapons, serpent spear for a big spearman all in. Uh, but Serpent Spirit, something that is maybe more late game orientated, gives Isis a little bit more power with their Spearmen in the late game if uh, you find yourself needing them, uh, as opposed to, say, like your Horus, which gives you 
the uh, the big, big super spearmen. So um, it's a bit of a help, but it's not that good. Definitely not something to, to think about getting too early. Necropolis here is incredibly strong. Plus 10% monument favor gather rate. Uh, if you have two monuments, you get your, uh, your monument to the villagers, monument to the soldiers. This becomes worth it to get. On just one monument, probably not. Uh, just because Necropolis is about half the cost of the third monument. Doesn't require a villager to build it. Uh, and it's going to be able to boost your favor gather rate to about the third monument level. I think it's a little bit less than the third monument level, but it is much cheaper than building that third monument. So that's that's uh, definitely worth grabbing. There's also Feet of the Jackal here. This one is ridiculously good, giving your Anubites the extra six jump range, 50 HP survivability. If you're going in with Anubis, and generally we're seeing Anubis against mostly just Norse, uh, and maybe sometimes against uh, like Atlantean, but uh, the feet of the jackal is a must must grab if you're going Anubites. They make the Anubites worth getting. Now, Plague of Serpents, unfortunately, this 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 god power doesn't see a lot of use. It it used to be good on vanilla in uh, on water fights because you could put the snakes down in front of the enemy docks and there and then they would have to kind of deal with that straight away and it wouldn't would be very difficult but on the times you can just garrison inside the dock and defend against it so it becomes more of a middle of the map kind of god power thanks so much for the three months shermination appreciate you thank you thank you my friend uh so this this one it, at the very least, it becomes something something to combo with locusts to like path block the villagers or to control a central area of the water on, say, like a Mediterranean. You generally don't want to put it underneath uh, enemy uh, enemy docks or anything like that anymore. So that's Anubis. Pretty pretty good god. Has a lot of value, a lot of use. We've got Bast over here. Now, Bast, we kind of kind of know, but uh, we'll just talk about this. So from what I understand, and I could be very wrong about this because I think people have been disagreeing with this uh, of late, but I, I, from, from, what I, from what I understand, Sacred Cats only really gives a bonus when you have irrigation. So this is your 10% extra villager gather rate on farms. So you want to get this as soon as you get irrigation. And the same thing with adds of wet wet wet. It allows you to get bow saw and then get adds of wet wet wet. It's a huge bonus um, as opposed to having to get bow saw and then carpenters to see that bonus. So it's a big, big help there in the mid game if you get both of those. So those are your economic, god, uh, economic upgrades and they are both very good, but they are, I would say mid game upgrades. So make sure irrigation and then make sure bow saw before you get those. Uh, we also have the Sphinx. We, we also have the Sphinx here, which does actually kind of double like the Anubite does. It's it's an early game raiding unit, and that's about it. As soon as the game gets on, everyone, every single civilization becomes able to deal with the Sphinx, and it stops being so useful. Uh, so it's an early game unit, which that means that you need to kind of rush Cryo Sphinx and Hierarchal Sphinx if you're going for Mass Sphinx, because that's going to allow you to use them in the early game. Um, it. it and it does really, really give you a lot of help when you get Hierarchal Sphinx with a plus 20% movement speed. They already move quite fast at 5.3 speed. If you get the upgrade, they go up to above 6 speed uh, from memory. Very, very, very strong technology against a lot of the lesser mobile hero, hero sieves like Norse, like Atlantean. Even like Egyptian can't really deal with these in the in the classical age. You kind of need to get into Patsukos to deal with the Sphinx. Uh, so that's the thing. And then obviously Eclipse is, is huge if you then couple that with the Sphinx. So you can, this is more of a Ra thing, but with Isis you can do it as well. If you have interesting plans, uh, not quite meta plans, but they definitely work. As I said, you can go any God path with Isis and have success. You can actually build your early Sphinx and then cast Eclipse straight away. Uh, to get a whole bunch of early villager kills with Sphinx. Uh, uh, just like say you're playing against a Poseidon player or something, and they go for a far second town center against you, thinking it's completely safe, sending their heroes forward. You send your Sphinx over the town center, Eclipse, you're going to be able to pick off nearly every one of those villagers and be in a really, really good position. Uh, so there is a lot of single use uh, of Eclipse that doesn't get seen, which is still very strong. But we then move on and we say, well, what is Eclipse normally used with? It's normally used with Ancestors. And the reason it's used with Ancestors normally is because you get 13 myth units in the minions, which are very, very strong in of themselves, to then double their attack 
uh, and speed them up by 20% as well. So it's actually huge. This also, I didn't actually realize this, but Eclipse also gives your monuments an extra 30% favor gather rate. I didn't know that. Things you learn every day. Amazing. How did I not know that? I have no idea. So it turns out if you're going to use Eclipse, make sure you have many monuments up. Obviously, you're probably going to, but that's funny. There you go. The more you know, the stronger you get. So Nephthys, we're going to go through all these. Nephthys can couple with Anubis and can couple with Bast. I'm going to keep saying this. You can go any god path with Isis for some success. So Ancestors giving you the 13 minions. If you're going with Anubis, you can kind of just cast it however you want. If you're going with Bast, you want to cast Ancestors and Eclipse together. You also have the Leviathan, which is useless in most cases it helps a little bit on anatolia but honestly you don't want to build this more than the free one that you get uh it can't be bolted as a as a small side note uh it's a bit of a i think it's a bit of a mistake from the balance team but you can't be bolted uh and that's life we've also got the scorpion man now this unit replaces the sphinx in the mid game which is why uh this this these upgrades here are very much early game rating focus because the scorpion man essentially is a sphinx except cheaper in a lot of ways and it deals more damage because it costs wood wood gathers faster than the than the food yeah it's a little bit more heavy on the favor by four but it's it's much more uh survivable uh and helps out a lot with its special ability more so than the sphinx the sphinx has to use its special ability on units so it can get caught out really easily it's super uh super clunky the scorpion man much much better at doing everything in the mid game than the sphinx is so that's why you kind of swap that out in that point so that's that's the that's the reason there and then we also have the spirit of mart this is a beautiful beautiful technology for the isis to do mass priest builds this is why the mass priest build is actually viable here uh, if you're going with say ra and try and do a mass priest build it's not going to be very good because now your priest costs 100 gold instead of 70 gold that's a big difference 30 gold every three ish priest you build that's a free priest uh, so you can get to that massive priest saving a, a whole ton of gold in order to make those uh those builds work and the thing is, if you have a 100 gold unit versus a 70 gold unit, you think about the cost of what everything else is. Say a Spearman, for example, is 70 resources. An Axeman is 70 resources. A Slinger is, is 84 resources. So giving that priest down to that cost that a normal unit actually would be makes it super, super valuable in the trade. Uh, so that's that. And then it also couples really well with funeral rites. Funeral rites is what allows Egyptian players to deal with myth units. If you can't, if you're, if you're, if you don't go Nephthys, you don't really have a good counter to myth units with your heroes. So you have to be aware of that. If you're not going through Nephthys, myth units are going to be a problem for you with priests. Priests are not going to be the answer to myth units. We have to figure out a different way to answer the myth units. And then we finally have the final upgrade. We don't see this a lot, but it is very, very good to couple with Son of Osiris. So City of the Dead gives your Pharaoh extra damage, but it doesn't give your Son of Osiris extra damage. It gives your Son of Osiris extra hit points and, and the Pharaoh as well. Um, it also allows your Pharaoh to respawn much quicker. So that's actually a, another thing that I didn't know. I'm learning quite a bit about looking at this. So this, this upgrade might actually be a lot better. If you're being super aggressive with your Pharaoh on the front line, finding it dying quite a bit, so the, the, the dead's not only going to give it more survivability with the extra 30% hit points, but it's going to bring the Pharaoh back into the battle uh, quite a lot. So very, very useful to get that one uh, and feel great about yourself. Now, the other thing is we see Hathor. Now, Hathor has come into favor a little bit of late with Isis players, uh, but I feel like it's a super, super strong pick in, in a lot of situations and could probably see much more selection over Nephthys. And the reason for this is because Hathor uh, ties really, really well with Osiris, given that now you have the mummies to deal with any big myth units. So... We'll talk about Hathor before we get into that. So Hathor's giving us Locust Swarm. Locust Swarm is a game-ending god power in that if you can pick off, say, 20 villages with it, you're just so far in front. It's super, super broken in that respect. Coupling it with Plague of Serpents, like we already said, means that you can cast the Plague of Serpents to path block the villages and then Locust, and you can get a couple of extra kills with that. Super strong. And then finally, Siege Tower pushes with Locust are really, really strong. If you find your opponent is being super cheeky and playing super defensive, trying to 
to utilize villagers to defend the siege tower pushes with your say chariot archer siege tower composition you could be going through uh hathor siege towers on the town center locust your t siege towers are no longer able to be defended so it's a super strong offensive god power in that respect as well now we also have the strongest uh heroic age myth unit here for the egyptians the patsukos this uh this, this unit is incredibly strong because it's dealing 55 pierce damage uh, and 12 crush damage per attack. It's not per second, but it's still a ton of damage. And the most important thing about this is it's an accuracy of 100%. So you remember I said that the, the Sphinx can be quite difficult to deal with if you don't have Patsukos. And the reason why Patsukos are so good against them is they get an extra 100% bonus damage versus Smith units. So now we're looking at 110 pierce damage per uh, attack. And it doesn't miss. So these Sphinx that only have 300 HP will get picked off if you have, say, four Patsukos-ish. will be able to one-hit a Sphinx. And you can, and they're super cheap, 15 favor. So if your opponent is going for mass Sphinx against you, you can definitely go through Hathor, utilize Patsukos to defend against that. Given that you could all, um, you could also go Anubis, get Necropolis, get into even more Patsukos. You've got Prosper Prosperity to boost your gold income to get even more Patsukos. It can be really, really strong, very, very good defensive uh, situation to be in. You also get the Rock, which. Unfortunately, not the best anymore because it only moves at 4.0 speed now. But one of the most important things about this is that if you're going for a fast heroic, the general counter to a fast heroic is to take map control. So if somebody's taking map control from me, that means they're walling the map off. And what you can use the rock for is instead of flying the rock with all the units in it uh, straight over to the villages, you fly over the wall you drop, you, you have the rock close to the wall, like say in a place where your opponent can't see it, like over the top of some forests. You run your fast units, your chariot archers, your camelry, your, your spearmen over to said wall. You jump the units into the rock. You drop them over the wall. Your opponent is none the wiser that they're about to be raided. In fact, they feel like they're super safe. Your units just rock up onto their, uh, their resources and you get easy raids with the rock. I feel like that is the best way to be using the rock in its current iteration uh, and we'll probably start seeing that a little bit more as Egyptian players uh, become aware of that but that's that's the rock there uh, super broken unit in the late game as well you can get siege raids you can get villager uh, side builds where they would otherwise not be possible to get so it, it's a super strong uh, unit there we've also got sun-dried mud brick another ridiculously strong uh, technology here giving yourself cheaper buildings by 15 percent which is a ton of saved gold and it will pay for itself as well with that saved gold if you're smashing towers also the plus 10 percent building hit points is huge definitely must grab technology this one here the croc op, cr cr i can't even say it crocodopolis is too expensive to be bought um it's better to just get an extra patsukos in my opinion the extra six range you've already got 20 range i believe yeah you already got 20 range so going up to 26 range what are you really outranging now? The priest here uh, starts with 10 range. You can boost that up. So you're already outranging the priest. You're already outranging the Hippolyta. Pretty much everything you're already outranging. So I don't see a whole lot of use for the cro Crocodopolis. So this is probably one of the few technologies here, unique technologies you don't want to grab. And then you also have Medjai. So this is possibly the strongest technology that Egyptian has access to in the late game. So it gives you all mercenaries extra lifespan which effectively means you need less trade to keep your mercenaries alive. So that's that's huge there. Huge, Magi. So that's why Hathor is, is, I think, is a much, much better pick than I think a lot of Egyptian players uh, feel like because they always go, I got to go Bar Snafis. I got to go Bar Snafis. I got to go Bar Snafis. Or you see some people trying to be cute going like Anubis Hathor, but there's not really a lot of reason but reasoning behind it. If you're going Anubis Hathor, it's got to be because you're getting Necropolis uh, and you're wanting to get a whole bunch of Patsukos out. That's the whole reason. You should probably be better off going Bast anyways and, and just saying, well, I'm going to just get the third monument and, and pay the extra resources to get more Patsukos out so I've got Eclipse to, to boot. Anyways, moving on to the Mythic Age gods here. We've got Osiris. Uh, Osiris is probably the god pick you're going to go the most with. Uh, thank you so much for the Prime Edip. Two months, appreciate you. Uh, so Osiris is going to be the one you're going to go with the most uh, because Osiris synergizes really well with Nephthys, given the City of the Dead. Uh, and 
and it also synergizes really well with Hathor given the mummy. Um, so we'll talk about it. Obviously, Son of Osiris is the strongest unit in the game. Uh, you only get one of it though. Uh, you have to be super careful. If you have it, uh, generally it allows you to win any fight for the remainder of the game so long as it's living. Uh, it's super strong if, when mixed with an army. Uh, you have to be super careful when your opponent is going through uh, Tar because of Shifting Sands. Be very aware that if your Son of Osiris is by itself, it can be shifted into uh, the enemy base and you will lose that one for the trade of, of a classical age god power. Uh, it seems to be one of those weird exceptions to uh, to a god power, which you would have thought that the balance team would have picked up on, given that they disallowed... Well, they didn't disallow it, but they basically said, you, Bolt, doesn't one-hit the Son of Osiris anymore. Uh, so I'm surprised that Shifting Sands can still shift this, but it is what it is. Uh, we've also got the Mummy. This is arguably the strongest... A one hit myth unit because it gives you not only one hits a myth unit but or one hits a unit but it also gives you a minion uh which are very very strong which is very very strong we we also have the atef crown now i don't think that this is ever worth getting uh maybe it's worth getting against zeus who has bellerophon just so that the jump special of the bellerophon won't one hit your mummy but uh, you're probably still going to lose it in the end anyways. So this might just be a waste of resources, maybe like a super, super, super late game pickup if you're sitting at full favor and can't produce any units, maybe maybe worth getting that. Um, Funeral Barge is another very useless unit uh, upgrade. 200% bonus cabinet damage against archer ships, maybe in the hyper late game on like a Mediterranean if you need to defend your shore or go for a water play, might be worth getting, but I don't think you're ever going to get that upgrade. And we also have the New Kingdom, this upgrade is a must grab, giving you extra pharaoh. I always forget about this upgrade, but it is must grab. Two pharaohs means you can have one on your market, one on the front line, spamming up towers or, or just repairing. Super strong, super good. And you also have Desert Wind. This actually makes your cavalry uh, worth building for Isis. Obviously, with Ra, it's a bit better because they already have the bonus for the cavalry but it, it obviously must grab and then finally we have thoth now like i said osiris is probably going to be the god you want to go the most uh that's simply because meteor is not as strong as you think it is uh 900 crush damage 100 crush damage per meteor i'm not sure exactly how many actually get done uh, uh, but it's 15 seconds i imagine it's around 15 so you're looking at approximately uh, 15,000 damage worth of, of God power, but the randomness means it's going to miss a whole bunch of those those uh, Meteors, and it really just doesn't kill too much. So if you're going to use Meteor, you need to couple it with Siege, which makes it not as good as Tornado. So immediately thought this hurting because of Meteor. Uh, you do have the Phoenix, which is a very, very big help uh, with Meteors because it, it deals a, a whole bunch of crush damage. Uh, so Meteor gets cast, you send the Phoenix in, you can finish off a Talon Center most of the time. So you can use the two together, but the Phoenix is super, super weak to every single ranged hero in the game. Uh, plus it's weak to the throwing Axeman with the upgrade. So it's, um, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a mixed bag. This unit is actually really, really good against Greek because Greek only has one ranged hero. So they don't have a good good response to Phoenix in multiple different locations on the map. So say your opponent is mining gold on one location and is trying to like run around the map you, or for multiple diff different locations. You can build like three Phoenix, send them to three different locations and just be raiding with Phoenix all game. It can be super strong, uh, but they are kind of expensive at 23 favor. Super strong though. Uh, the War Turtle is super similar to the Leviathan. It's just a nice free unit here. Uh, most of the time, I'm actually going to be deleting this unit. Uh, it does have a... Special attack, which is kind of useless. Uh, in fact, probably bad because it's sending the ships away from it. So it can't immediately attack it. It's one of those kind of polyphemous style units, which will probably be better without the special. But anyways, uh, generally speaking, the water fight's probably going to be over by the time you're in the Mythic Age. So the war total is kind of useless, which makes me a little bit sad. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a game design flaw in that the, the myth units were put towards the... The water myth units were put mostly towards the end of the game. Uh, but... It is what it is. We've also got the Book of Thoth. This upgrade is Godsend. This upgrade actually allows uh, Isis to compete economically with Ra. So 
if you are going into a late game battle against uh, against a Ra player, it is actually kind of an idea to go Thoth just for Book of Thoth so that you can go equal. Because you also get the extra population. We haven't actually talked about the, the major god bonuses here, but uh, Thoth, both the Book of Thoth is bonkers good. And then we also have Tusk of Apatomark making your War Elephants ridiculous. The only counter to War Elephants is uh, infantry with bonus damage against cavalry. So you're looking at the Bragi Olsarks, you're looking at Fanatics, you're looking at Myrmidon, you're looking at uh, Horus Spearman. If your opponent doesn't have access to those units, Isis with Thoth becomes incredibly strong. So be aware of that if you're trying to work out whether or not you want to go through Thoth. And you also have Valley of the Kings here. Um, obviously, like one-hit units are really good against elephants as well. So finally, we have the bonuses for Isis. The big bonus for Isis, which is super strong, and the reason why Isis is strong, is the plus three population per town center, putting you up to 169 population for free, which means essentially I can get nine more camel caravans in the late game than everyone else, which means I get more economy. Uh, you also get cheaper obelisks, which we haven't talked about it yet, but it's a big, big, uh, big, big difficulty for Isis in the early game is scouting. And then you're, and, and essentially everything else, we get your negative 10% uh, upgrade cost as well, which is huge. It used to be a bonus for upgrading to the classical, heroic and mythic age, but... Ensemble Studios decided that was too strong and, and nerfed that. And then finally, we get the Monuments Preventing God Power, which is another ridiculously strong bonus for Isis. So you want to make sure you spread your monuments out so that your opponent can't like cast Earthquake on your on your base too easily. Uh, so the obelisk, the obelisk things are kind of useless, but they are there. So let's talk about... I'm not going to talk too much about this part of the tech tree. I'm just going to talk about strategies now. So... Isis's weaknesses, we'll just go through that quickly. Isis's weaknesses, like I discussed, was scouting. So scouting is super hard for Isis because like in the early game, you want to be empowering with your Pharaoh, not scouting. So oftentimes you need to weigh up whether or not I need to empower and allow my priest the, uh, the, the possibility of actually not finding anything useful or to help the priest scout early game with the Pharaoh. So there's a lot of situations where this is really, really key. So for example, on, a, uh, on an Oasis map, say you spawn two zebra, you actually want to send your pharaoh out to scout to get out priest and sorry to get out the herdables and to find yourself your giraffe gazelle spawn that's just one example extrapolate that out and decide whether or not it's worth it to scout with your pharaoh in the early game or not uh so that's that's the big weakness of isis the, the next weakness of isis is not having access to uh tar uh which is it's not necessarily that this should do that Isis misses out on because Isis does have prosperity, but it's the shifting sands. So there's a lot of early game abuse that Isis is going to take. So for example, against the Greeks, she's going to have to play around the fact that your opponent's going to have Jason, uh, Theseus, those classical age, archaic age heroes, and is going to be able to push you off any hunt you have. There are counters to this in, in spamming out your priests. So you can actually build yourself, say, five priests to defend the Jason Odysseus, but but that kind of breaks all builds that Isis wants to do. Uh, but it can be a way that Isis can deal with that. Um, so that's the big weakness of Isis. No shadoof. No, no, no shifting sands. The strengths of Isis come in the shape of uh, classical fights with a obnoxious heroic age power spike. So if you can go uh, Eclipse or Bast Nephthys. A classical fight, if that's a situation you can force, you can do a lot of damage with that. You get uh, Anubis raids, which are bonkers good against a lot of civilizations like Norse. You get... Um, you get... A crazy strong one town center fast heroic all-ins, which I do have a video for. Uh, but that, that build is maybe a little bit dated. Still good. And, and the most important thing here for Isis is if you get a strong second town center, it is always worth it to rush that up because Isis with good food on a second town center means there's no abuse that she's going to cop because she can just sit under the town center, eat that food, live the dream. Uh, and, and if you can do that, then you can kind of do whatever you want and be in a really good position. So that's Isis in a nutshell there. Army compositions for Isis, you want to think about uh, the units you want to make sure that you're thinking about getting are spearmen, Axeman, Chariot Archer, Elephant, Siege Tower, and then Catapult. So the units you kind of want to ignore with Isis are Slingers 
and camelry for the most part. So obviously extrapolate out for yourself what your opponent's building as to what you should build uh, and mix in the myth units as well is really, really good for Isis. Uh, and then finally, the last thing to talk about for Isis is on the water maps. On Anatolia and Midgard, Isis's best builds uh, are centered around 18 fishing ship, 515 advance with five docks into a very, very fast, semi-fast heroic age. So it's building cabinets. Prosperity when you're about 500 to 600 food allows you to get your 500 gold 800 food allows you to ancestors your eclipse your opponent's economy uh, and be in a huge advantage at that point. That's Isis's main water strat. On, on Mediterranean, your best bet is to defend and then use prosperity to get three town centers. You, against Greek, against Atlantean, uh, even against Norse, Egyptian is probably losing the water on Mediterranean. Equal skill. So that's that's Isis. If I missed anything, I'll uh, ask questions in the comments. I will respond to these questions and uh, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a comment, hit the like button. Oh, I forgot about this. Before we finish, most important thing, upgrades. Upgrades you must get for economy. Hand axe. This upgrade gives you plus... 28.57% increase. Hand axe is bonkers. Uh, Bosor, don't get this if your intention is not to immediately get carpenters. Bosor gives you no real increase. No real increase. Carpenters gives you a big increase on top of that. Okay, next one. Pickaxe, must grab this upgrade. Gives you plus 16.67% increase. But... Shaft mine puts you up to 40% from your base. That is a increase from pickaxe of 23.33%. Huge. So, hand axe, shaft mine, must grab. Quarry only gives you a 5.83% increase from them. Uh, and then finally, your farming upgrades. Plow with husbandry is giving you a 30.19% increase. If you don't have plow and husbandry and farming, you're doing it wrong. Irrigation gives you then on top of that another 11%. And with uh, flood control is giving you up to another 9% on top of that. So flood control isn't like that important to get on top of irrigation, but it's definitely worth getting because food is, is important, but definitely irrigation rushing. So just to go over that again, Hand axe, shaft, mine, irrigation. That's what you got to remember. All right, if you guys enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.